What's going on guys, it's Jeff for Mad Hatter's Reef and today we're going to be taking a look at how to reduce your nitrates in your reef tank without doing a water change. So if this is the first time being here, this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love reef tanks like I do, gently press that subscribe button in the face. Alright, so before we jump into today's video, very special announcement. I'm pretty excited about it. I am going to be going to the 2017 MACNA in New Orleans. So if you are going to be going to MACNA and want to stop by and say hi to me when you see me walking around aimlessly uh, amongst the people, uh, stop in and say hi. I'd appreciate to meet you guys. I look forward uh, to it and yeah, just look for the bald head and I don't know what this is. But you get to say. All right, guys, so we're going to be taking a look at the Brightwell Aquatics Bioplate Microbacter 7, the NO3 brick. These three products are going to help us reduce nitrates in our reef aquarium, and I'm going to tell you how and why. Ten years ago when I first started out in the hobby, if you were to tell me that there was going to be a product that you can use to help reduce nitrates that's a liquid, I wouldn't believe you. But this video is going to focus not so much on the Microbacter 7 as it is going to take a look at the brick and plate from Brightwell Aquatics. And really, MB7 all on its own really deserves its own video. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a future video of Mad Hatter's Reef. So today we're going to be taking a look at the NO3 brick and the bio plate. Both these are designed to do relatively the same thing, but it's how you use them is where you get different results. So I'm going to read a couple things off from the box of what Brightwell says about the NO3 brick. It is the most porous, largest usable surface area per unit weight or volume of all filtration media available anywhere that's a pretty large statement to make uh, it provides a huge amount of anaerobic surface area for efficient bacterial colonization and denitrification and with that that's what's going to reduce the nitrates in our saltwater aquarium so this product is incredibly porous when you pick it up you expect it to be a lot heavier than what it is and that's because it's so porous and it's something that you can shape. So if you need to fit it into a smaller space in your sump, you can take a saw to it and cut it up. They also have a cube version of both the NO3 brick export and the plate. And even though that I said earlier that these two things are very similar, they do achieve different things. And when you look at the coloration of the brick, it's a little bit more yellow than the plate. We'll get into that a little bit further in the video. So Brightwell Aquatics recommends that you seed both the brick and the plate. And how you would go about doing that is using RO water or aquarium water poured into a container such as a bucket and then add the MB7 per direction on the label. And what that will do is it's going to seed both the brick and the plate with bacteria that it needs to colonize on those surfaces and start working for you. The recommendation is for them to be soaked for 12 to 24 hours with a dose of MB7. And really what that's to do is to seed both the brick and the plate with the aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. Now the bacteria is not going to know which plate it needs to be on or which brick it needs to be on. Uh, where you place it in your sump is what's going to dictate what happens with the bacteria. So with the NO3 brick, we're going to be placing that in a low flow section of our aquarium system. With the plate, we're going to be putting that into a high flow area, something that's going to have a lot of fresh water moving over it. So with the plate, that will achieve aerobic bacteria. And what aerobic bacteria is good for is converting ammonia in NO2 to NO3. So if there's anything that ever dies in the aquarium, even though it's established, it's going to help keep the nitrogen cycle alive and well in the aquarium, even though that we are completely cycled. You can still have ammonia spikes, you can still have NO2 spikes, and that's why it's important to have aerobic bacteria 
alive and well within your system. So with the NO3 brick, I'm going to be installing that in a low flow section of the sump. And what's going to be achieved with that is anaerobic bacteria. And what anaerobic bacteria is good for is the conversion of nitrates into nitrogen gas, which eventually is bubbled out and dissipates into the atmosphere. So what's going to happen is all the nitrogen within the aquarium is going to be converted to nitrogen gas and leave the aquarium. Man, do I love science. So the benefit of this stuff is it also adds to the surface area of your aquarium. So one brick can help manage a thousand gallons of aquarium water. One brick. So also another benefit of this product is you can have less live rock. If live rock isn't your thing, you can have less of it in your aquarium and still be able to handle more bio load, more fish, and also help reduce nitrates in your aquarium. So I'm putting the brick in a low flow area and I'm gonna be putting the plate in a high flow area. Now this isn't the highest of flow areas, but it is probably the highest flow area in my sump. And the reason for that being is one, the water's pouring out of that reservoir area into this section of the sump. And I also have a little pump. You can barely see it just to the right of the brick. And what that's doing is it's pushing water over the brick. And the reason why I have that doing that is because of my Neptune system's dose is dosing calcium and alkalinity right there. And I have that pump to kind of break that up so it doesn't have any massive uh, buildups happening in the sump. And it's also going to create that high flow area for the bioplate. And what I want to show you guys here is so you can see the top portion of this brick is dry. And over the next couple of minutes, I think it took a total of five to 10 minutes, you're actually going to see the water get sucked up by the plate and it's going to hit that entire area of the top of that plate. The water level in this baffle is not usually this high. I shut off my pump to my protein skimmer because I just dosed uh, some MB7 and the recommendation is that you shut the protein skimmer off for four hours, which is going to help seed the entire system at that point. So let's take a quick shot here. You can see that the water's already kind of sucked it up a little bit. And then I'm going to fast forward another five minutes or so. And the plate completely absorbed water to the point where it actually is completely saturated. And that just goes to show you how porous this stuff is and how much surface area it's going to offer your aquarium for nitrifying bacteria to grow and thrive. And in this shot, you can kind of see the coloration difference between the brick and the plate. And the reason for that being is the brick is dosed with sulfur, which sulfur helps promote anaerobic bacteria growth. And what that's going to help do, obviously, is promote that environment and give them what they need to thrive beyond the MB7 or just the correct environment of a low flow area. Now, what this right here, the shot showing is that dead space below the brick. Now this is kind of some old school stuff at play here. A long time ago when people first started keeping saltwater aquariums, they were actually using under gravel filters. And what that was doing was creating that aerobic bacteria level to help promote a more successful and bulletproof saltwater aquarium. And really that's pretty smart on Brightwell Aquatics part to kind of repurpose that design and create that environment for that bacteria to thrive. So I'm really looking forward to having these products in my 260 gallon system. And if you guys wanna check out this product and this product line, there's gonna be a link down in the description below. Full disclosure, it's an affiliate link, uh, but there's no extra cost to you. It just helps out the show. All right guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you wanna support the Mad Hatter's Reef Project, there is a link down in the description below to my Patreon page. And just for this week, I'm gonna be showing you guys all the bloopers that didn't make the cut on this video. It's horrible. If you wanna have a laugh, uh, link down below. I'll see you guys next time right here with a brand new video.